So let's start with the easiest perspective approach, the one-point perspective. But first, uh, let's take a look at what I have created here. So I have a line that represents the horizon. I have a vertical line that marks my center vanishing point. And also here in the background, you can see a circle, which is my cone of vision. Up front, before we do anything furthermore, you have to be aware of one limitation of perspective drawing. The way how your eyes can see the environment is not the same how, for example, a single lens system like a camera can see it or how a 3D software is representing 3D space. Perspective drawing is more similar like a camera can see the environment, but not how your eyes can see it. So if you create a perspective drawing and you always feel like it doesn't look the way how you see the environment, to a certain degree, that is simply because perspective drawing is to a certain degree like an oversimplification, uh, kind of like an approximation. So it's somewhat accurate, but it's not really 100% accurate. And also this cone of vision is very important because our eyes can see much wider than, for example, a camera can see without showing any perspective distortion. So let's start maybe with drawing a proportional square. Let's say center position. So I go to my center vanishing point somewhere down here click and put down kind of like a line. So this represents my front edge of my square. Next step, constructing my left and right edges. We see here already that this edge is parallel to the horizon line, while those lines are actually converging to the center vanishing point. Now the next step is defining how deep now my square is. Let's say maybe like this. This feels good. The tricky part with this fourth step is you need to develop a good feeling for what looks proportionally correct and what simply is distorted. So for example, distorted would be this. Obviously, the square is too wide, it's not deep enough. The same result would, for example, be this. So this is too deep and not wide enough. And a good way to figure out what, for example, looks proportional and what not is creating um, a cube out of maybe paper or foam and rotating that in front of your eyes so you can see and observe the different faces you always see, like a left and a right and a top or a bottom face. So maybe I want to go to here. But the problem also we have is internally we think about a square two-dimensionally, but to draw it we have to distort it. So very often we tend to actually put this line too high. so it starts more to look like a square, but that's not actually what we can do. Okay, so let's maybe, for example, draw a square this way. So you see, I just moved it a little bit to the left side. Now I mentioned that there is something like the cone of vision and let me show you what happens if, for example, I go to here. So there you can clearly see that actually, in particular, this corner looks very, very distorted. While, however, in this drawing, this corner is starting to get distorted, but it is not yet really that distorted. 
So that is basically what this coefficient is very useful for. And you also already see that actually it limits a little bit the, your work environment. Now, so far we created simple squares. Let's do something three-dimensional. Let's create maybe a square. So I'm creating my front face. And again, what's very important to understand in one point perspective, my vertical lines are just vertical. They do not foreshorten. And the horizontal lines are parallel to the horizon line. So now I have to put in my missing bottom and top edges. And similar to the uh, back edge for the square, I have to define the same here now as well. So maybe there. And actually this looks not correct. This that cube is more deep than it's wide. So maybe somewhere here. And this actually starts to look more accurate. Yeah. Now if we want, we can quickly delete those lines and for example then create this. So there we have created a somewhat proportional looking square and cube. Let's do this one more time. For example, let's create something like a room. Rooms are actually very easy. So you see this now feels like you're standing inside a room and you look into. Also, the horizon line is actually representing your eye level. So for example, this drawing here is more representing maybe a room where kind of like your eye level is at the mid level of the room ceiling. So in case, for example, we would like uh, to create a drawing where maybe, let's say we're on the floor, then things would change a little bit. So let's do this for a second. So I have to actually delete some of those drawings. So we're on the floor. That means actually this has to go up. So for example, I sketched in now my ground plane. Here is my ceiling. And let's draw in our back wall there. So you see this actually looks you now like a room where the observer is kind of like on the ground plane. Let's do the opposite. Let's say we're actually close to the ceiling. And ceiling lines, the floor lines. And kind of like it's to find how deep this room is. And there we are. So as you can see, one point perspective is actually um, very good to represent maybe a room you stand in. Uh, if you want to represent a product inside, it might not necessarily be the most attractive approach because you technically speaking can only see maybe the front and the top face of an object, but you can't really see the left and the right side. But if it's a room, so think about a room and object you look into, you also see the left and the right part.